Mr. Chairman. Mr. Honeywell is here. Oh, wouldn't you know at a time like this? All right, tell Mr. Honeywell to come in. Good morning, Murray, my boy. B.I., uh, don't you know it's customary when the secretary is announcing you to wait until she tells you to go in? All right, I may be retired, but please remember that I'm still the president of this corporation. You're the only man that I've ever met that can ride both those horses and me too. Well, anyway, I knew you had no one in here and you weren't on the phone with anybody. How did you know that? I listened outside the door before I had Miss Sherman announce me. Well, I give up. All right, I'm worried. What are you worried about? We did three times more business last month than any month in our history. Exactly. But I'm worried that you're likely to rest on your laurels. You're relaxed, float with the tide. Well, you might even want to take a vacation. I haven't had a vacation in five years. A commendable record. I believe you'd be perfectly willing to see me kill myself working for Honeywell and Todd. Oh, nonsense. Hard work never killed a man. Besides, our group insurance policy covers you. Now, Vern, what about this Benson Foundation? They're going to invest huge sums of money every year. I know all that. They're going to invest huge sums of money every year. You said that before. I like the sound of it. Huge sums of money every year. All right, all right. We'll get out of here. Well, keep after them. You can't high-pressure an organization like that. I don't believe they're ready to discuss investments yet. Well, make them ready. Wine them, dine them, but be sure you get your money's worth. Surprise, Dad. Hi, Mr. Honeywell. Hello, Margie. Margie, you're supposed to have yourself announced even when you went to my office. Oh, but I figured you wouldn't mind. I knew it was just you and Mr. Honeywell talking. You knew that? Well, sure, I listened, listened outside, outside the, the door. door. Is anything wrong with that? Pay no attention to him, Margie. That's just another one of his notions. Civility, courtesy, privacy. He worries about everything except getting new business. I do wish you could think of some way to... Before you two start, let me finish what I came in for and get out. I know what you came in here for and advance on next month's allowance. Well, nothing doing. Yeah, but Dad, it's important. You've got to learn, Margie, that that doesn't always work. But Freddie's taking me out to dinner tomorrow night, and I simply have to have a new dress. Freddie, well, that settles it. Absolutely no advance. Now, Dad, you know you're going to give it to me. Why not save yourself the trouble of arguing? Go ahead, Martin, give it to her. Matter of fact, you should buy her a little piece of jewelry every now and then. <laughs> I realize it's my money you're being so generous with, but even so, What's gotten into you? Three cheers for Mr. Honeywell. Margie, you know this idea of encouraging employees to be thrifty is pure nonsense? Give me an extravagant worker every time. A man that spends more than he makes will work three times as hard to make more than he spends. <laughs> yes. Now, Miss Sherman, make out a check for my daughter. She'll tell you how much. Ah, oh, you're a darling. That gets rid of me. And don't heckle him too much, Mr. Honeywell. He's the only father I've got. Now, Vern, about this Benson Foundation. Enough the hour, enough. I told you I'd look after it. All right, I'm going. Vern, I know that you think that I'm grasping and that I'll stop at nothing to get new business for the firm. But let me tell you this, it takes a big man to admit it. I told you I'm not ready to order yet. I'm waiting for a lady. Sorry to be late, but I couldn't help it. I know, I know. You were just trying to get up the nerve to tell me. What? You're not having dinner with me. You've got another date. <laughs> and you just dropped by to tell me. Well, thanks. How could you think such a thing? Oh, it's been that kind of a day. <laughs> Poor darling, bad day. Everybody kept bursting into my office. Honeywell plaguing me about that Benson Foundation. Margie in for an advance, and then Freddie. Now, Vern, really? Oh, I'd like to knock his block off. Say, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> oh, waiter, we're ready to order now. I suppose this is the wrong day to say this, but I think you're being very unreasonable about Freddie. Me? I'm as reasonable as the day is long. Outside of the fact that I think he's a good-for-nothing loafer, I don't think he's good enough for Margie. I'll tell you a little secret. No father thinks that any young man is good enough for his daughter. Well, that's nonsense. Is it? It certainly is. Why don't you try to find out what fits for Margie to defend? And if you were to be friendly with him, well, she wouldn't have anything to defend him against. Me? Be friendly with him? Why, I'd have to act as if I liked him, and how could anybody like Freddie? I do. You mean that? Yes, I do. Well, all I can say to you is... Oh, no, you can't, Vern. What? You can't say that, because then we'd both be angry, and there's no sense in that. See you tomorrow.
Yes, just one. <laughs> Charlie, I'm just about to embark upon a great experiment. Yes, sir. I'm about to be nice to a no-good so-and-so. Yes, sir. Mr. Wilson's in there with Miss Marjorie right now. <laughs> Let me congratulate you on your judgment, Charlie. You know who I meant. Wasn't my judgment, Mr. Albright. I just happen to know who you don't like. <laughs> Yes? Hi, honey. Afraid of keeping you company? That's nice. I'm glad you weren't left alone. Good night, Margie. Now go right ahead with your game. Don't let me disturb you. You don't think it's late? Not very. You don't think I ought to be going? Oh, don't rush off on my account. Mr. Albright, may I pull at your mustache? What? If it comes off, it's not you. <laughs> very funny. Go right ahead with your game, but don't step too late. Good night. He's cracking up. Do you think we ought to call a doctor? Mr. Honeywell's been writing him about getting that Benson Foundation account. The Benson Foundation? Mm-hmm. My father's just been made chairman of that. Freddy! Yeah, it won't be announced in the papers until next week. Freddy, baby, darling! Freddy? Okay, good. Baby, a little dangerous. Darling, then I know there's something you want me to do. But of course, Freddy. You can help Dad get their investment business. Margie, would you trade on my love for you just to help your father in business? Uh-huh. I thought you'd be that self-centered. But, Freddie, this may be your chance to marry a rich man's daughter. Hmm. You're right. I'll do it. Good. We'll have them to dinner, and when Dad meets your father... No, no, no. That won't work. Every investment firm in town has been high-pressuring them. They're pretty sick of it. Well, I hardly think father will high-pressure them. Maybe he won't, but if old Honeywell hears about it, he'll surely turn it on. True. But having them to dinner's a fine idea. My mother and father meet you, they'll just have to like you. That'll give your dad a big edge. I'll have to tell him. And yeah, we'll tell him you're having them, but don't tell him why. Gee, Freddy, on simple things, you're hardly ever able to come up with an answer. But on anything tricky, you're right there. <laughs> just naturally shifty, I guess. <laughs> I better be going. He's likely to get his energy back any minute. Oh, there's one more thing. Is this a Freddy baby, darling? No, just a Freddy baby. <laughs> Mr. Honeywell had a wonderful idea that Dad should give me some jewelry. So when you go downtown tomorrow, will you stop off and have them send me up a ring sizer? Don't you know the size of your own fingers? No. Do you? Sure. Fifteen and a half. That's your collar. Oh. Okay. I'll have them send one up. Mmm. Wonderful coffee. You never miss, do you? Thank you, sir. You were awfully nice to Freddy last night. Freddy. I'm particularly glad that you were. And why are you particularly glad that I was? Oh, no reason. I just am, that's all. I like Freddy, and I'm glad you like him, too. This coffee is awful. Marge, have you changed our brand? Now, Dad, just because I mentioned Freddy's name. Oh, why didn't they call him Hubert or Wilbur? I'm getting tired of hating the sound of Freddy. Oh, you don't really dislike him. Anyway, try not to show it tonight. Tonight? Why? What's tonight? Freddy's parents are coming to dinner. What? Now, Dad, let's not argue. Now, look here. People only do that when... Now, be a good boy, and you'll be glad you did. Margie, I simply will not have them coming here and... <laughs> Come in. We're, we're here, here because we're here. Because we are not there. And that's why we are here. Good evening, friends. Oh, Adam, I'm glad to see you. Hi, you fine old kid. It's like the hand that shook the hand. Hey, tell me, how's everything going? Uh, about the same. We wait 20 odd years for Vaudeville to come back. Yeah, now that it's coming back, we ain't with it. These TV producers don't seem to understand a class act. Nah, we're over their heads. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, Eddie. Very well, Dad. Oh, okay. Come on, fellas, let's sit down. Yeah, thanks. All right, <laughs> excuse huh? me. <laughs> hey, a big shot at one of the networks broke loose in the hall yesterday. Yeah, and what'd he say? He says, let me pass. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Well, don't worry, fellas, you're bound to hit. You had one of the greatest acts I've ever seen. That's when we had Mike. Yeah, we sure had a great act. Chauncey 
the Dodger and Mike. Headliners. Yeah, money rolling in. You handling our investments? You boys were one of my first clients. Yeah, those were the days. <laughs> Poor Mike. Yeah, what happened to him? He was hit with a car. He was hit by a fierce arrow. Yeah. We tried out a lot of dogs after Mike. But the act was never the same. Yeah, dogs nowadays don't seem to have the talent that they used to. Oh, look, Brian. We come up to see you on a matter of some importance. Uh, how is the stock market holding up these days? Oh, it's doing pretty well. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. And the bond market holding up too, huh? Very strongly. Ah, fine, fine. Any particular reason that you boys are interested? Well, Brian, we were hoping that you'd be in a position to lend us Five bucks. Oh, of course, of course, any time. Oh, my wallet's in my coat over there. The jeweler sent this package up to you. He said he couldn't deliver it up to the house, but that Margie... Uh... Oh, excuse me, gentlemen, I didn't know anyone else was here. You see, I should have listened at the door. <laughs> I thought Mr. Albright has taken care of you. Oh, yes, everything's fine. Has he recommended Peruvian national bonds to you? Peruvian national bonds? Uh, B, uh, I don't think that these boys would be interested in the... Uh... Uh, Fern, please don't interrupt me. These Peruvian nationals are a great investment. We've joined two other firms in underwriting the issue. They carry a good rate of interest, and they're backed up by a hydroelectric development that... <laughs> go on, go on. He's reading. Fine. What kind of a joke are you trying to play on me here? B.I., you came in here of your own choice. Uh, bah. Here's your five. I'm still the star of the act. This must make close to 300. Oh, don't worry, boys. You'll pay me back. You know, I don't think he likes show people. Lots of people don't. I'm sorry. I hope he didn't hurt your feelings. Oh, we're used to it. I wonder what Margie wanted from the jeweler. A ring sizer. Great Scott. Freddy's buying a ring. <laughs> Congratulations in order, Blaine. Oh, they certainly are not. I'm dead set against this marriage. But those kids are so far ahead of me, there's nothing I can do about it. I wish we could help you. Freddy's buying the ring. His parents are coming to my house tonight. I'm sunk. Did you say his people are coming to your place tonight? Yes. Maybe we ought to play a benefit, huh? A good idea. Well, what do you mean? Well, like we were saying, some people don't like show people. Get it? No, I don't. Well, supposing we show up as your best pals. Supposing you're bored with this investment racket. And it must be mighty dull, and you've got a lot of show people around to liven things up. Maybe these people might go for the daughter of an investment counselor, but they'd think twice if they thought your place was a hangout for hoopers. An animal axe. An acrobat. <laughs> well, it might work. I'm desperate. I'll try anything. We'll make it work. But it won't be a benefit, though. Now, look. Marge, you'll probably try to force me to get rid of you. But no matter what I say, don't you leave until 12 o'clock and there'll be 20 bucks a piece in it for you. Frankly, we can use the money. Okay? I'll see you at 6.30. Right. right. Shall we leave? What do we do to get off? Eva Eifa, of course. Eva Eifa? What in the world is that? You don't know that? No. One, two, Eva Eifa. Eva Mrs. Wilson? Thank you, my dear. Uh, no, thank you. Later. If you'll excuse me, I have a few more things to do about dinner. Can I help you, Margie? Oh, yes, thank you, Freddy. Well, she seems like a very nice young lady. I wonder what her father's like. Well, Freddy tells me he's a, a Wall Street man, rather a conservative. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. <laughs> What's your father going to get here? He should be in any minute. We're here because we're here because we, because we are not there. We're here because we're here. Because we aren't there. We told the great jokes to please you. Riddles and magic tricks to feed you. And that's why we are here. Good evening, friends. <laughs> 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 Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, I believe. I'm Vern Albright. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I just happened to run into a couple of my friends and I brought them along. This is Chauncey. And the Dodger. How do? Hiya, gentlemen. Say, haven't we met someplace before? Uh, I hardly think that's like that. Oh, no offense, sir. I thought there for a moment that we'd met. No, I guess not. How oh, the boys are a million laughs. You'll die. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I know what I'll do. 
If they begin talking business, I'll start singing. Oh, Freddie, people don't suddenly burst into song in the living room. They don't? Of course not. Oh, and gold and Hobby's rather odd. A bit. <laughs> I can't help it. I just love show folks, and I like to have them around me all the time. All the time? I see nothing strange about it, Stephen. If that's what Mr. Albright wants, he should most certainly go ahead and have them. That's telling him, kiddo. My wife's name is not kiddo. Sure, sure. No offense, man. <laughs> What's the name of your act? Well, it used to be Chauncey the Dodger and Mike. But we're trying to talk Vine into joining up. Then it'll be Chauncey the Dodger and Vine. And what happened to Mike? He passed on. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. He was running away from a Great Dane and a car hit him. Well, that's a peculiar way to meet up with an accident. For an Airedale? Oh, Mike was a dog. Mike was a great performer who just happened to be a canopy. Oh, oh so Mr. Albright is taking the place of... Nobody can take Mike's place. Well, if yours is a singing and dancing act, what did the dog do? He narrated it. <laughs> but there's more to the act than just songs. We're going to give him a full variety bill. Dances, prestigitation, and Risley. What in the world is Risley? Foot juggling. Show him one of our magic routines, Vine. Okay. Uh, have you got a watch, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, yeah. And a very valuable one here. Be careful with it. Chauncey, get me a chair. Mrs. Wilson. Would you be sore if I asked you a question? No, oh, of course not. What is it? Did you ever have anything to do with Captain Gibson's trained seals? <laughs> Captain Gibson's trained seals? <laughs> really? No offense meant, kiddo. What's got you so angry? Dad, trying to make an impression like that on your parents. Well, I was just thinking it's one of the smartest things I've ever seen him do. What? Sure, Mother's loving every minute of it. He must have found out about Dad heading the foundation. And is he a smooth guy? He knows he can't get around Pop, so he makes a big hit with Mother. She likes it? Oh, she's loving every minute of it. Why, the old smarty. I wonder how he knew she would. The watch. <laughs> I met another friend at luncheon today who invented this trick. He showed it to me. He had a little pattern that went with it. The more you look, the less you see. I really need a hammer, but a heavy bookend will do. No, 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 no! Don't worry, Stevie. My friend did this before the crowned heads of Europe. My friend never missed. And now the uh, bookend? Here it is, Dad. <laughs> Professor? One, a two. Oh! Oh! I wish my friend were here. Oh. Oh, beautiful watch. Professor, maybe we should go into our dance. Your watch. <laughs> if you think this is funny, you should have been here the night the acrobats were here. Dad, come out on the terrace for a moment. Oh, excuse me, just a minute. Pretty slick, weren't you? What do you mean? Yeah, I'll bet you haven't the faintest idea that Mr. Wilson was made head of the Benson Foundation. What? It won't be announced till tomorrow. How did you find out about it? That Freddy. How could he do this to me? E for I for, E for I for. Okay, fine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, E for I for, the E for I for. I hear Albright say E for I for. That's what it sounded like. Curious. I wonder what it means. Now, I want your strict attention for this trick. This trick will not be repeated. I only do it once in every city in the land. The E for I for, the E for I for. Go away, boy. You bother me. <laughs> Dodge. I knew I'd 
met you before. It's Trixie. You're right. Trixie in a musical scene. Well, it took you long enough to remember. Gee, I'm sorry, Trixie. Are we forgiven? We are forgiven. <laughs> a one, a two. <laughs> oh, like the old days. The old days. Like the old days. <laughs> You're looking wonderful. Well, you boys have held up pretty well yourself. <laughs> Tell me, Albright, just what is an E for I for me? Uh, e for I for? Really, Stephen, for a brilliant man, you are amazingly uninformed. E for I for means to take it on the Arthur Duffy. Come on, boys. One, two, E for You know, Albright, this is really very thoughtful of you. I haven't seen my wife have such a good time in years. Oh, it was nothing at all. I'm glad she's having a good time. Well, she certainly is enjoying herself. You know, I was very suspicious of you, Albright. Of me? Yes. You see, I'm a rabid vaudeville fan. That's where I met my wife, and I thought you had heard about it, and uh, you were catering to us. Well, why would I do that? There's a development in regard to the Benson Foundation that will be announced tomorrow. Uh, just call me up as soon as you read the announcement, and I may have something of interest for you. Oh, I'll be glad to call you. Good. Good. Because we are there, and that's why we are.